Hello students, welcome to MEC 1321 Engineering Statics. Today we're going to be going over sections 4.8 and 4.9 of the book. Uh, section 4.8 is further simplification of a force and couple system and section 4.9 is reduction of a simply distributed loading. So let's go ahead and start with section 4.8, further simplification of a force and couple system. Now in the previous section we simplified a force and coupled moment system into a single resultant force and a single re resultant coupled moment. So we took the system of a bunch of forces, a bunch of coupled moments, and we're able to simplify it into a single resultant force and a single resultant coupled moment. Now uh, in this section we're going to show that we can further reduce the system into a uh, a single resultant force provided that the line of action of the resultant force and the resulted couple moment are perpendicular to each other. Meaning that uh, the resultant force is in one plane and that resultant co uh, couple moment comes out of plane at 90 degrees to your force. Uh, so let's go ahead and look at some of the types of systems that we can simplify. An example of a system is a concurrent force system. In a concurrent force system the line of action of all the forces passes through a common point. So if we were to take, if we look at this example here, we have uh, uh, some box, excuse me, we have some box and there's four different forces and we find that the line of action of all these forces go through some point O. Well if we were to take this system um, and we wanted to find the uh, resultant uh, about or find the, the information of the, of the system about point O, we would find that if we were to sum these, we would get a force resultant uh, at point O, but that no moment develops. And that's because at that point O, since the line of action of all the forces is going through point O, there is no moment that will develop in the system if, it's, uh, if it maintains equilibrium. So it's important to always note you know, what is the line of action of these forces and do they all go through the same point or not? Another type of system is a coplanar force system. And this is a system where we can uh, uh, simplify uh, into just a singular force. A coplanar force system can be simplified into a single resultant force and, and coupled moment about a point O. This system can be further reduced into a single force at a fixed distance D from point O. So let's say that we have a uh, force system and we'll note that uh, the line of action of these forces do not all go through one con concurrent point. They, 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 the, the intersection of these forces is not through one point. So when we take this system and we apply our, our equilibrium of equations, so we sum the forces, we sum the moments about point O, will produce a force resultant FR and will produce a, uh, a, a resultant coupled moment uh, MR0 and uh, if you know pr uh, if the the resultant force is perpendicular to the moment R which it is in this system where the first force resultant is on one plane and the moment is coming out of the page in another plane so that's a perpendicular uh, system we can further simplify this uh, by replacing our, uh, uh, our force resultant, uh, well, replacing the moment with the, the force resultant at a fixed distance d, such that the, coupled, the, that the resultant moment is equal to the force resultant times this perpendicular distance d from point O. Uh, and so this demonstrates the, that there is equivalence between these three systems, where you have your four applied forces, or you have a force resultant and a coupled moment, or you just have a force resultant at a fixed distance from point O. Now it's important to note that for this system to actually, you know, for this equivalence to actually exist, that the resultant force and the resultant coupled moment must be perpendicular to each other. So the force resultant, which is in one plane, has this moment that comes out of plane that produces that perpendicular uh, uh, relationship between the uh, vectors. So that's pretty much uh, how we can further simplify a, a force and couple system 
into uh, just a singular uh, resultant force. So let's go ahead and go into section 4.9, which is reduction of a simply distributed load. Um, this section is very important, and you'll see quite a number of these types of problems in the book, um, in the, in, uh, th throughout the book uh, as we uh, go forwards. So let's go ahead and start. Sometimes a load will be distributed over a surface. Sometimes a load that is applied is applied is distributed across a surface. So another, a, a number of examples are a book, a box that is on a table um, where the box has a distributed weight and that weight is distributed across the surface of the table. Another example is wind that is applied to a sign where the wind force, the force of the wind is distributed across the sign. Another example is water in a bucket where the weight of the water, that, that force weight of the water is distributed across the uh, uh, you know around the interior of the bucket now, another example is sand you know so say you had sand that you put on the floor and the sand had different you know heights to it you had like a, a hill of sand well then the weight is not uniformly distributed on the floor the 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 uh, the higher or the denser area of the sand will produce more weight there's more weight at certain locations uh, uh, along, along the floor um, all of these examples are examples of things called a distributed load, where uh, pressure is exerted at each point uh, along a surface. It's uh, distributed along a surface. Now, this pressure uh, uh, that is exerted is in units Pascal, which is newtons per meter, or it can be in pounds per square inch, which is pounds over inches squared. So let's go ahead and um, look at... Uh, uniform loading along a single axis. So say we had a beam and we applied some kind of distributed pressure load across that 3D beam. Um, we can describe that pressure uh, along that single axis as a function. Well, the pressure is a function of the position along the axis X. And then the pressure is in units, newtons uh, per meter squared. This pressure can also be described as a coplanar distributed load or a line pressure. If we were to take the 3D uh, problem and, and revert it to 2D, where you have your x-axis and your y-axis, um, we could describe it as a coplanar distributed load, which, uh, which we'll call W, where W is a function of the uh, position x along that beam, along that single axis. Um, and W is equal to the uh, pressure um, the the, uh, the the distributed pressure P uh, X times B, where B is the thickness of the beam, uh, and that line pressure or that coplanar distributed load is in newton in units newton per meter. So um, so let's uh, go ahead and look at the diagram here. On the left, we see we have our three D beam. We have this distributed pressure where, we'll, where we replace the z-axis, we can call it, we can replace it with the value of the pressure load. And we see that uh, this load is distributed along the beam, and the beam has some distance L. Uh, now let's look at the, the next image below, which is where we revert this problem into a 2D problem, and we replace that distributed uh, pressure with a line pressure, a coplanar distributed load, W. And again, we can distribute that load at each point along the axes, uh, and it's a function of the axes x. So let's discuss the magnitude of the resultant force. The distributed load can be replaced with a single equivalent resultant force. Um, and in order to do that, we integrate the line pressure over the beam's length. So Say we have this distributed load and we distribute it at every single point along the beam. Well, if we wanted to find the resultant force, then we have to sum all of those individual uh, values of force in order to get a resultant. In the case of the function, uh, using our, our line pressure function, it's a continuous function from zero to the length of the beam. So in order to get that sum, we can integrate 
f uh, over the length of the beam, uh, the, the, um, the line pressure function. So we find that the force resultant is equal to the integral over the length of the beam of Wx dx, which is equal to the area under the distributed uh, pressure curve. So we've replaced this, the, the z-axis, or we'll, we can call this the y-axis, with the value of the line pressure. And if we did that and we you know, calculated, or we had the function there, uh, everything, when we, do, when we perform the integral, what we're doing is we're, find, we're finding the area, when we perform the integral, from 0 to L under this distributed line curve. And so if we understand or know the shape of the function of the, of the line pressure, so you know, say it's a, a box shape, then we can simply find the area under that curve and we'll know what our force resultant should be. So the magnitude of the resultant force is equal to the total area under the loading diagram. Uh, it's important for us to uh, uh, be able to draw the loading diagram. So the next step is, now that we've found the resultant force due to that distributed line pressure, um, is to locate that resultant force. What is the location of that resultant force along the, uh, the x-axis of the beam? The location x-bar of the equivalent resultant force can be found using the following, uh, where uh, previously, to find the value of the resultant force, we use the sum of the forces. To find the location, we can use the sum of the uh, moments, where the, uh, the uh, coupled resultant moment about point O, where we can choose some point, is equal to the sum of the moments. Well, we know that uh, the resultant moment about point O is going to be uh, some distance x bar, which is the, the location of the resultant force from our point of interest, times the magnitude of the resultant force. And that's also going to be equal to the integral of uh, the uh, uh, x position times the line pressure dx over the length of the beam. And so by you know, applying this equation uh, and uh, uh, um, so by applying this equation and simplifying it, so you know, manipulating it, we can find an equation that describes the location of the equivalent resultant force x bar, where x bar is equal to the integral of x times w uh, dx uh, divided by the integral of w dx. Uh, now, if we look closely at this equation, we'll find that uh, uh, the denominator is actually equal to the value of the force resultant, uh, which is also equal to the value of the total area of the loading curve. Uh, and so, you know, simply when we apply this position equation, what we need to do is find the numerator, which is the integral of x times w dx over the length of the beam. Now, x bar locates the geometric center or centroid of the area under the distributed load. So let's go ahead and, and look again at these diagrams on the on the left hand side and, and kind of discuss them before we move forward. So again we have our beam, we have it in 3D. We see that the beam has a distributed load on it. We can call this load the distributed uh, uh, pressure load P. Um, we know that uh, when we sum the value of the distributed load across the length of the beam that will produce a resultant force FR at some distance X bar from our point of interest where we'll say our point of interest is point O. Um, we can further simplify this uh, drawing by creating a loading diagram where we replace the uh, axes with W, which is the line pressure, um, which is in newtons per meter, and we uh, simplify the problem by getting rid of the 3D dimension. So uh, taking uh, the thickness and rolling it into the line pressure. Now that we've done that, we see that we have this loading diagram which describes how the function of line pressure changes with respect to x. We uh, have our force resultant, which is at some distance x bar from our point O. And we just learned that x bar locates the geometric center or centroid 
of the area under the distributed loading. So if we know the shape of our loading diagram, if we know the shape, then it's very easy for us to find the ge geometric centroid of that shape, and that would be the position x bar. Um, so let's go ahead and look at some examples of finding that x-bar position, some very simple examples. Say we have a line pressure that is equal to a constant value. So a line pressure that is equal to a constant value that will have along the entire axes, it will have the same value. So what we'll, we will produce in our loading diagram is a rectangular shape. Now if we're producing a rectangular shape, then we know that the geometric center, a center or centroid of that uh, rectangle will be half of the length of the rectangle. So our force resultant is going to be equal to the area of the, uh, of the rectangle, which is going to be a W times the length. And the position, our X bar of the force resultant, is going to be half of the length, which is L over 2. Now what happens when we have a triangular uh, distributed load? So say our load function, our W function, produces a triangular load. Well, we know that with a triangle, uh, uh, that the area of a triangle is going to be one half uh, the, the base times the height. So our force resultant, since it's equal to the area, is going to be equal one half of, omega, uh, of, one half of W at position 0 times the length. And the position of our force resultant uh, due to this being a triangle, we know from uh, geometry from high school that the, uh, the centroid of that triangle is going to be at one-third of the length from, the, uh, from the, um, the, uh, the, the height of the triangle. So we know that the x-bar position for this triangle is going to be L over 3, which is uh, one-third the distance from the, the height, the, the, the maximum height of that triangle. And this is just a simple example of how we can use geometry in order to find the resultant force, but also to find the uh, position, uh, the x-bar position of this, uh, uh, of this simply distributed load. Now it's important to note that uh, it often is not very easy for us to utilize these simple approaches. Uh, many times when we're dealing with a distributed load, it's not a simple function where it's a rectangle or a triangle. It could be some kind of parabola, it can be some unusual function, which will necessitate that we actually use the integration, that we actually integrate uh, uh, the uh, distributed, the, the line pressure or the coplanar distributed load, uh, W, in order to solve for the resultant force, in order to solve for the position of that resultant force. So it's very important that you practice uh, your integration, you, you brush up on it, uh, you remember the exercises that you did in calculus in order to do well with these simply distributed loadings. Um, it's also important that you understand the theory and how you can go from uh, this using the distributed load function to actually using uh, the, the geometric information about uh, the, from the loading diagram, the area under the loading diagram in order to solve these types of problems. And we'll see, uh, we'll do a number of examples, some simple, some hard, in class, uh, which will allow you to, to, fur to further understand how to, how to do these types of problems, because you will see distributed loading often in this class. So uh, that pretty much ends the uh, lecture for today. Please read sections 4.8 and 4.9 from the book. Uh, go uh, really read them in detail. There's some steps uh, that I do not include in this video that could be very helpful for you in solving these problems. Do a number of the example problems which will allow you to really uh, reinforce the theory that we've learned in this video um, and come prepared in class for a quiz as usual as well as uh, working in exercises as an individual or, or in a group. Um, uh, if you have any questions, you know, please post a comment in this video. If I was unclear, I can you know, post a supplemental video to clear up any uh, misunderstandings. Um, uh, thank you for your time. I'm Dr. Stewart. See you again. Uh, see you guys next time.